and this proposal, which we're going to be outlining right away. I think it's going to make a lot of people very, very happy, a lot of moms very happy. Focusing on the issues that affect working women is something that is vitally important to each of us standing on this stage. We know men always want more money. What do women want? More time. Our plan offers a crucial safety net for working mothers whose employers do not provide paid maternity leave. We can provide six weeks of paid maternity leave to any mother with a newborn child whose employer does not provide the benefit. Hi there everyone, it's Christy. In today's video, I want to demonstrate how Trump's proposal for paid family leave for mothers is a reflection of patriarchal norms that people still hold in our societies, that if enacted, his policies would be detrimental to women and men, and demonstrate how his bigoted family leave policy practices are actually the most biased against gay men who want to become fathers. So let's set off all the anti-feminists by giving an accurate definition of patriarchy instead of the straw man that anti-feminists create and spread through their channels and online. Feminist theory defines patriarchy as an unjust social system that enforces gender roles and is oppressive to both men and women. As David Richard writes, feminism, as I understand it, arises in resistance to the gender binary enforced by the patriarchy, an injustice that is as harmful to men as it is to women. We can observe patriarchy in our society by observing which values and or roles that our culture or religions assign to men and women. Patriarchy is best observed when we compare it with gender equality. In family leave policies informed by gender equality, men are valued as fathers as much as women are for their roles as mothers. Policies based in gender equality would take into account the unique circumstances each sex faces, in this case that women bear the physical burdens associated with giving birth, but would otherwise produce outcomes that would be similar regardless of the person's sex or sexual orientation. Because feminist theory typically characterizes patriarchy as a social construction, that is to say, it's constructed by and between people expressing their own attitudes, values, and also expressed in their behaviors, then adherence to patriarchal norms that confine and limit both men and women's roles in life can be overcome. We break down and remove patriarchal norms from our society by paying attention to differences in norms for men and women, and then critique and analyze how they manifest, and offering counterproposals based on gender equality. In Donald Trump's world, it's always been women who took care of the children. Now he's had five kids by three wives, and he's bragged that he doesn't change diapers and that his entire parental responsibility comes down to writing checks. Donald Trump's worldview is very much informed and influenced by patriarchal values. This is apparent when we look at how he would use the power of the federal government to shape people's lives. Let's look at his campaign proposals with particular attention to the sex differences and also to the exclusion of gay couples because of the patriarchal view that family is a household headed by a man with a wife who maintains the home and the children. Trump's proposal would give mothers six weeks of access to unemployment benefits, as well as to some tax credits for stay-at-home mothers and other child care credits. But men are not included in the leave plan, and the Trump campaign confirmed that to the Huffington Post. Now, unemployment insurance doesn't usually pay you what you've been making. In most states, it's a fraction of your salary with caps on what you can earn every week. So this isn't truly paid maternity leave in the strictest sense that it's normally used. Also, Trump's tax deduction, which would replace the current tax credits, means that low-income families who don't pay much or nothing in income taxes would lose out. Now, Trump would boost the earned income tax credits to make up for some of this, but the current child care credit would go from a maximum of $2,100 to an earned income tax credit of up to $1,200. That's a 43% drop. Trump would use the power of the federal government to impose a system that reinforces the patriarchal idea that men work outside the home and women do the child raising. Josh Lefts, author of All In, a book about fatherhood and work, battled with his employer for the right to paid leave. 
His book documents the many issues men have with employers who, like Trump, don't even consider the possibility that men might want or need time off to care for or be with children, partners, or other family members. He recounts in his book that a man named Jay Ramsey took off part of a week after his wife had an emergency C-section, and he was then berated by his bosses for disloyalty. Men don't do that, the rationale went. As you can see, Trump's proposal doesn't address families where a man is the one who plans to stay at home with the new child, even though today 40% of working women are the breadwinners for their household. Also, two out of three dads say they want to have an equal role in raising their children. This policy leaves men out and it makes it much harder for men to achieve parenting equality. Trump's mom's only proposal fails two dad or single dad families. And the number of single father households in the United States increased from 300,000 in 1960 to more than 2.6 million in 2011. By focusing solely on moms, Trump's policy encourages fathers to return to work sooner, forces women to take on the bulk of the childcare duties, and it would keep women away from work longer than men, meaning that women are more likely to fall behind in their professional careers. It also provides a powerful incentive for employers to hire and promote men over women. After all, under Trump's plan, women are entitled to paid time off that men don't get. So why not hire the man who has to come right back to work after the birth of his child? There's a lot more I could say here tying this issue to the wage gap and to other things, but to stay focused, I think that this quick review makes it quite easy to see how Trump's view of men as breadwinners and women as child rearers in the home shaped his policy on maternity leave. Because his patriarchal norms are also homophobic, his policies did not consider the lives of gay couples and especially gay men who adopt or have a child with a surrogate mother. I get comments all the time from people who deny that patriarchy exists for pretty much the same reason creationists deny the theory of evolution is valid. They don't understand what is meant by the term patriarchy. Instead, they buy into the same sort of propaganda that creationists seek out to reinforce their worldviews. Look at Carl Benjamin, also known as Sargon of Akkad's, uninformed and propagandist use of the term. Now, if Carl were limited to an accurate definition of patriarchy, a theoretically accurate one, not a cherry-picked one from the dictionary, he wouldn't be able to make his videos. It's only because he misrepresents the term by creating a straw man that he can knock down that he can make content. He has to lie to his audience instead of presenting the concept and theory accurately in order to make money. His living depends on lying to his audience. Denying patriarchy exists blinds people to the real-world problems a policy like this would create for men and women in the United States. The sooner people understand the concept and theory of patriarchy, the sooner we can focus on creating policies whose purpose is gender equality outcomes. Trump's proposals are a move back to the Bronze Age, a biblical view of life. And nobody wants to live in the Bronze Age. That's going to wrap up this video for me. Thank you for your time and attention. I've been Christy. You've been awesome, and I will be seeing you in another video again very soon. Bye.